Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today for our weekly webinar series. Today, our featured topic is an overview of the Pro product line. My name is Jessica Petrohoy, and I'm the marketing coordinator at FiberOptic.com. FiberOptic.com is a leading provider of fiber optic products, training, and rental equipment. We're pleased to present this topic to you today. With us today to talk about the Pro product line is Joe Kyron. Joe is the product manager for the Atel Group and Precision Rate Optics. Joe will be reviewing the different types of equipment and products, as well as their differences and advantages, in order to help you choose the right equipment that's suited for your needs. When Joe is finished, we'll take questions from the GoToWebinar question box that's at the bottom of your screen for a question and answer session. So anytime throughout the webinar you have a question, you can put it in the question box and we'll get to it at the end. Also, all of our webinars are always posted at fiberoptic.com slash webinar. So thank you again for joining us today. And at this time, I turn the presentation over to Joe. Thank you, Jessica. And I think we're just going to get into the presentation here today. I'm going to give you a brief overview. It's going to be like a 50,000 foot view. Maybe we'll drop down to the 30,000 foot view uh, to give you an understanding of what products we have uh, and what Pro and Adtel Group is about. So with that, here we go. You may have heard of Pro before. Pro is an acronym for Precision Rated Optics. Uh, it was a company was uh, has been in business since the early 2000s, and we are an OEM. The pro portion of uh, Adtel is an OEM manufacturing group. Our products are sold, serviced, and supported in the United States, uh, and we are proud to boast the only company that offers go kits. And I'll get into that later uh, in the presentation. And we are one of the five members of the Adtel group. As you see below, there are five, as they say, key properties or components. I like to refer to them as business units because they do uh, operate separately from one another. The first one we have is the Adtel Integration. That services group includes FC characterization as well as installation. Second, you have Pro or Precision Rated Optics, and that's the OEM portion of our business group. Then we have fiberoptic.com, which is the distribution component of the Adtel group. Then you have the fiber school, which involves training and classroom and fiber optic content globally. And the last component is our software portion, and that's Fiberbase, which is a data asset management database to properly uh, diagram for your network so you can uh, know what's all in your network and everything that goes along with your fiber optic network, document your fiber optic network. And this just gives a little basis of what the Adtel group, what the different components, you know, what were the basis of what we do. Like I said, services, you can, we go as simple as fusion splicing, a couple lines uh, for a customer uh, up to, you know, you know, we see there was an earthquake in Haiti and we went there and we took care of uh, some emergency restoration for the networks that were over there. Uh, precision rated optics, again, we're a different alternative to some of your other brands that are out there from fiber optic uh, products. Fiber school, again, training. Like I said, we do training worldwide as well as domestically. Uh, we are in locations such as Dubai once a year, we're in Vegas, in California, we're in Florida, South America. You know, you need us to come to your facility. If you have six people or more, we'll come to your facility and we'll do a, a special, either specialized training on a topic that you need or one of our already developed classes. Again, FiberBase, it's a network mapping software. Um, used to, and it works on a database, and like I said, you can uh, document your network, you know, down to what node is on uh, Fifth and Vine and what fiber bundle is there. You can go all the way down to that minute level. So it's a very comprehensive and large program. So 
So one of the main things that Pro has here is the equipment, the fiber optic products, OTDRs, power meters, light sources. I'm going to go through all that stuff. So as you can see here, we have fusion splicers, OTDRs. We have our go kits. Again, I'll explain that. We have our optical loss go kits, test equipment, and we also have tools and consumables. So the first category we have up here is our fiber optic fusion splicers. Now we have pictured here three units. We have our 790, nine, uh, OFS 950R, and our OFS 935 core alignment. You can see the first and third units are both core alignment. The middle one is a ribbon splicer. That's not the only fusion splicers that we carry. You can see there's a couple other part numbers down at the you know, bottom of the screen here. If, again, at the end, please save your questions for the end, but in the, if, you, if you need to give a specific application or uh, project you're working on, you're not exactly sure which fusion splicer you may need, call our sales group up. You know, we'd be glad to uh, explain the differences and the best things to figure out what your application is, and then we can better tailor which product we should we would suggest that you purchase. Uh, so let's we're going to go through some of these, but just these three splicers gives a good shows the breadth of what we have. You know, our Pro 790. That's 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 a lower end fusion splicer. I mean, it can do everything that the 935C can do, but it's got doesn't have all the bells and whistles, and it doesn't you know it doesn't have a colored screen, doesn't have a touch screen. So those are some of the subtle differences. But in the end, a, a fusion splicer. All fusion splicers do the same thing, and that is they fuse two pieces of glass together in an optical network. So this just gives a rundown, the data sheet of the, the Pro 790. The big thing that you want to take away from this is the eight-second splice time, and that's a, you know, a splice operation. And then, obviously, if you're putting a uh, protection sleeve on it, the heating time is about 35 seconds. So in less than a minute, once you've prepped your fiber, you can have a uh, fused two pieces of glass, and you know you can start testing. And, you know that's so it's pretty quick. Uh, the other, I'm not going to go through everything on the data sheet, but you can do multi-mode, single-mode fibers on here. Um, you know we have these webs, uh, these um, data sheets are on our website if you you know want to take a look at them again in the future. But this gives a good basic understanding of what the specifications are for this particular fusion splicer. Again, now I said this is the OFS 935. Yeah, you know, we're looking at, uh, and this was a little bit longer. This is 12 seconds average, but there's a quick mode that gives you a seven, seven second splice time. Uh, and the heat time is, I believe, 18 seconds. Yeah, the heat time is 18 seconds. So it's a little bit faster than the heat time. And it's about the same or maybe a little bit longer than the splice time. But again, you're less than a minute. You have a, you have a splice. Once your fiber's done, you have a, you have a, you have a splice. Uh, this unit, like I said, it's got a color uh, LCD monitor, and it's also touchscreen, but it also has the buttons on the side. And it's a compact unit, so that's the other thing. Here is uh, our OFS 950R. Uh, the one thing that you want to really notice about this one is it's for ribbon splicing. But also, ribbon splicing, it also has everything on board that you need to do all your splicing preparation work. Uh, up in the, I don't know if you can, see, I don't know if you can see the mouse here, but up in the upper right-hand corner, this actually has a built-in thermal stripper, and um, to the right side of that thermal stripper is a cleaver, and then in the back here you have a heat a heater like all fusion splicers have, and then there's a little alcohol cleaning uh, fluid container right there. Uh, if you can see on the, in the, the little looks like a little black cylinder on the right-hand side top right, excuse me, top left. But the nice thing about this unit is once you put your fiber in the fiber holder, it gets stripped, cleaned, cleaved, and then it goes into the fusion under the wind cover and you don't touch it and don't move it once it's, you know, it's been stripped and cleaved. So that's a nice, nice little feature, but the strip, the, the cleaver and the stripper 
built one board on this fusion splicer, never not, you're never going to have to worry about losing the cleaver or losing the strippers. They're they're with that unit. So it's a it's, you know some people you know they'll go to a location and they'll you know do their splicing operation and they forget to pack their cleaver up and they lose their cleaver. So it's one of the, you know a nice all-in-one type unit, uh, which is a good thing. And then here we're just showing you that you know we have we also have uh, cleavers you know you know the FS uh, C20 that's the cleaver that comes with our uh, Pro 790 so if you lose one you know we have replacement cleavers uh, the middle one is used for the uh, another replacement again the one good thing about this this can accommodate also ribbon fiber this that's just the, the FS C81 and the last unit can do all kinds of fibers, but it's got a fiber scrap container also there, so you don't have to worry about losing these strands of fibers after they've cleaved. It's in a nice little trash can that, you know, once you're done with it, you can empty it. That way you don't have fiber shards laying all over the place. So we have a few other splicer, or excuse me, a few other cleavers in case you lose one replacement or you just need a cleaver. So that's a, another thing that is nice to have. And these have replacement blades, so you can, these blades, re, you know, have different positions. So uh, they last up to, usually most of them are about 50 to 60,000 cleaves per blade, actually, after it's turned all the way through its 12 positions. So again, we have cleavers that we can sell that we manufacture. Next, we're going to hit on our OTDRs, which is the optical time domain reflexometers. We have a wide variety of these, from handhelds to with with small three and a half inch screens to handhelds that are seven inch screens to a multifunctional uh, platform that's modular that you can put different modules on depending on your need. So we have here our FTP1 series. Again, this is a handheld unit. Uh, but it packs a punch. It's got uh, dynamic range on these, go up to 35 dBm, which is pretty good for a handheld unit. It comes with a bunch of different features. You can get a power meter on these built in, uh, VFL built in. You can get quad models, meaning multi-mode and single-mode wavelengths. And all your, you'll, you'll get a regular trace that will show up on this screen, just like any normal OTDR would. And you can download that onto the computer so you can do some anal analyzation on that. But this is a handheld, pretty powerful unit. This unit here is also considered a handheld unit, but they're configurable. In this particular model, it's got a VFL, which is the first port of the larger ports. Uh, then it has two different wavelengths in the first and two different wavelengths in the second. This happens to be, I believe, a quad unit. So this has 1310, 1550 for single mode and 850 and 1300 for multi-mode. And it also has a built-in power meter um, as well as a VFL. So this unit comes packed with a lot of stuff on it. It also has a stable light source, which means you can use the light, you can use this actual OTDR uh, with a stable light source, meaning it's a constant wave, it's always on, and you can use it almost like a light source. And with the power meter that's built on board, you can do loss test readings with that. Problem with that is, if you're two different locations, that's where it becomes difficult to do. So you, if you have an extra power meter laying around, or you have an extra laser source, you can kind of use this OTDR as one, and that other unit as the other. That way, you can, you know, you don't have to have two OTDRs at both ends, or you can have it if you have an existing light source that you have. You can use the light source at one end and the power meter of the OTR on the other. So it's, it gives you some flexibility. This thing is also a touch screen, and uh, you can also add a inspection scope onto this to inspect your end faces. And again, you can download these readings onto your computer so you can do analysis and, and print out reports. This is a pretty powerful little unit, and it's priced pretty good too. This is a higher end, one of our higher end units. This is a modular OTDR, and you can see that how that has on the right hand side of this screen, it's got three 
modules that are piggybacked onto each other. Uh, so you can purchase a unit that will be your wavelength, whether it's you can see the different um, wavelength options underneath the larger picture that shows which wavelengths you have. So you can get all those wavelengths. And then what you can do is you can add another module, one that does a power meter, and there's another one that is for a uh, pond meter. You also have a VIP that you can plug in this video inspection scope. This one also has a stable laser source. So it gives you that modular modularity that you can expand and purchase and add on to this unit as your needs require and as your needs grow. And again, this is it's going to use a Windows CE operating system, which is good. And it's got a nice large 8.4 inch touchscreen. And this is touchscreen also. So it's a very nice and powerful unit. Next we're going to go over, I'm going to call it more generic or lower end test equipment. And they include your light sources, power meters, VFLs, and video inspection probes. And you can see again, we have listed at the bottom here uh, the different series of equipment that we have. Again, I'm going to briefly be covering these. So you can see here we have two pieces of equipment. On the left-hand side, we have your optical brake locator. And on your right-hand side, we have an optical fault locator. Uh, basic difference between these two is your brake locator is going to find a brake or the end of your fiber line. And that's good. This is like a first responders toolkit where there's an outage somewhere, but we don't know where the outage is. So you go up there and you plug it in and you hook it up to your network and you turn it on and it's going to say, all right, there's a break at 2,000 meters. So your next level technician is going to go out to that 2,000 meter area and kind of investigate. Maybe there's a down tree, uh, a squirrel to chew through a fiber. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for that break and that's what this unit is used for. The optical fault locator, which is the next one on the, on the right hand side, uh, the difference between this is this is a two wavelength as well as giving a graphical trace shot where the again the optical brake locator does not give you a trace it's just simple distance of where your brake or problem occurs but the optical fault locator has a traditional trace like any OTDR would and it's got up to two wavelengths and two wavelengths are generally used uh, mainly if you need to find a macro bend or or some issue where the wavelengths are going to be a little bit different at 1550 and 1310, and that's really how you can show if you have macro or micro bends and fiber, especially in your single mode. Next we have here is a pond meter, which is your passive optical network tester, and this can be used as a pass-through device. So you're going to plug your one line into the unit and then out of that unit back into the uh, your patch panel and you're going to be able to see your levels and you can set thresholds with this you know to show your pass fail you can you know preset them uh, and if you have different network or MSOs that you're working with maybe it's Horizon maybe it's Comcast and they have may, maybe different thresholds you can set those up inside this unit and you know you can get you know hey this is a pass fail and you can print out the report here and you can see our unit how it has all those it's got the wavelengths, it's got the VFL, the storage capacity, it's a color display, it's got a USB port, color indicators versus some of the other ones that are out there. You know, we have all the so-called requirements or features that some of the, the bigger players may not have all that stuff. So it's a nice compact and rugged unit. Next we have our visual fault locators. Uh, our VFLs. And we have three examples here. The first one is our VFL. 1A. That unit is pretty unique in the fact that it's got three different power level settings based on the distance that you're shooting it. It's got a 1 milliwatt, 2 milliwatt, or 6 milliwatt uh, output. And, you know, usually your 1 milliwatt is going to shoot about 5K. Uh, 2 milliwatts could shoot about 12K, and your 6 milliwatts are going to do, you know, 15 to 25K, somewhere around there. So, that's nice just that you can you can change your intensity on that. And again, that's your red light. You can, you know, you're looking for breaks, you're looking for bends, 
uh, it's really a continuity type checker. Like if you know like in the electronic world, that's like a continuity checker to the, the fiber optic people showing that you have light from A to B. Next we have our VFL 10, which is a pen style. You know, you've seen these out there and these are generally one milliwatts uh, output power. Uh, then you have your VFL 5, which is a really small, it's about, I don't know, maybe four inches in length. The picture is a little bit deceiving, but that's the same, same operation. VFLs all do the same thing. And both the VFL 10 and the VFL 5 can also have an option to come with a 10 milliwatt uh, output. So if you know if you're going to need that, you're going that extra distance. You want that extra power, so it goes through. You know you can get that; it is available. Here we have our inspection probes, or inspection or microscopes. So, you know we go from kind of basic to more advanced or higher end. So we'll start on the left hand side. And our HM-C400S is our optical microscope. This is the one that you're going to use to in inspect patched cords. And that's really all it can be used for because you can't, there's no adapters to get into or no probe adapters to get into the bulkhead portion of it. This uses white light. And again, you're using, a, it's a microscope. So you're going to want to 100% make sure that you don't have any lasers on when looking at fibers through this microscope because you can damage your eyes. But the main thing with this is it's only for really inspecting patch cords. Next one in the middle you be our VIP35 data. This unit is an inspection probe and it's a 400X unit. And by the way the HM400C is also a 400X or 400 magnification. They also come as an HM-C200S which is a 200 magnification. But the price difference it's really better to go to the higher magnification. Uh, maybe 10, 15 year, years ago, 200 uh, times magnification was, you know, that was the, the, the important one that was out in the field. And then, you know, five years after that, the, the 400 magnification scope came out. And it just, you know, it's much better. You want that magnification so you can see the smaller dirt scratches and whatnot. So I would always recommend to get a minimum of 400 magnification scopes. But the data inspection probe, you can use to inspect, inspect patch cords as well as adapters or bulkheads. You know, when you can't get to the back end of your patch panels, you got to use an inspection probe and inspect right in that adapter. And that's what these types of inspection probes are used for. They have a bunch of tips interchangeable for your basic connectors and some advanced type connectors. So this thing really packs a punch in a small compact package. And it, is, it has the 3.5 inch monitor that's included and you can store your results. And what you're storing is you're storing just the picture of what the M face looks like. And it can be downloaded into a computer and then create a, a report can be created from that for documentation. And as you know, you're going to be going forward and fiber is becoming more and more part of our communication lives, so to speak, documentation is very important. So on the right-hand side, we have the VIP45. Again, this is a probe type inspection product. This one plugs into a uh, computer, plugs into a couple of our OTDRs. And then through Wi-Fi, it can connect to a tablet. It can connect to your iPhone. Um, and the nice thing about this is you can also have pass analysis software as an option. And again, that comes to the documentation point that I was talking about earlier. Companies want this documentation. And what this does is this takes a view at your end face and it has rings and zones and specifications from IEC that determines if it's a passing end face or not. You know, there can be so many pieces of dirt in this area on that end face versus another area as you go away from the core. So that's the main difference between the VIP45, the VIP35, and the microscope. Here we have our OFI, some people call them live traffic identifiers. And basically what this unit is used for is to determine if you have 
a laser radiation or a laser or light or something on your fiber. You will put the unit in this piece of equipment. It'll bend the fiber and it'll be able to see power in versus power out from left side to right side. Uh, and it'll tell you, hey, I have power here and it's going in direction A to B or B to A. And the other thing is, say you're at one end of the fiber network and your partner's at the other end and he's telling you, I need you to get the fiber six and the color codes are mis mixed up. He can say, all right, I'm going to put a 270 hertz tone on fiber six. So you go through and you put your unit, your OFI, on the fibers until you find the unit that's got the two, that has the 270 hertz tone on it. And then you know, hey, that's the one that we need. Cut it, do whatever you need to it, splice it back, and then you're on your way. So this is a good thing because you can't see fiber radiation. And without cutting into a fiber, this will tell you, this is the one that I want to target. This is the one that I want to work on. And that's what the benefit of that is. Here we have our pole suppressors. Some people call them launch boxes. And these are used mainly in the area of your OTDs, OTDRs. And there's mainly two reasons you use them. The main reason I think this is more important is the protection factor. You have an OTDR, you know, it might cost upwards anywhere between three to seven thousand dollars depending on your model and the, the ability or the, the specifications of that specific OTDR. And you have a laser that's on that unit. What you do is you use this pole suppressor once you inspect the end faces before you connect to your OTDR, you plug it onto that OTDR, and then any time that you're doing your testing or you're plugging in and out of the ports, you're not touching your OTDR port. You're just plugging your other end of the of this pulse suppressor or launch box into your port that you're checking. That way, if you have any damage that occurs by that mating and demating, it's going to happen on the launch box, not on the OTDR. Because the OTDR is going to be costly to get that fixed because you're going to, if you scratch up that end face, you're going to have to send that back to the manufacturer, to us, and we're going to have to get it, we're going to have to polish it, take it apart, so it becomes costly to fix that. If you scratch your launch box connectors, send that back to us also, we polish it up or we, you know, put on a new connector, and it's, it's, it's quicker for one, and it's also much less uh, costly. So that's the, what I think is the more important portion of it is. The other is, if you're shooting short distances and you're using a one kilometer launch box, there's something as known as you want to say, it's called a dead zone. But think of this, when you have your OTDR on its shortest wavelength, which generally is about five nanoseconds, that's about a one meter's length of light pulse that you're sending down the line. As you know, OTDRs continually pulse wavelengths and they send those out and they're look, waiting for reflections to come back. So if you have a one meter beam of light going down the line and you're using a one meter launch cable, you're not going to be able to see your first connection, say, from your after your OTDR because that one meter light is basically going across that and it's going to drown out. You're not going to be able to see any reflections because it's going to be covered by that one meter length of light. So that's how you can kind of under, hopefully understand what the, the other importance of a pulse suppressor or a launch box is. Again, any questions that anybody has, save to the end. But if you want to call me or call any of our salespeople to talk about the products that you didn't understand, please feel free. We have our go kits, and these are our optical loss go kits. Basically, what these go kits were are designed to do, you have a power meter and a light source, VFL and a microscope, cables and adapters. And these kits are designed so you can do optical loss and to end attenuation. The difference between the four of them is some of them are only single mode, some of them are multi-mode, some can data log and some cannot data log. That's the main difference between these. But in the end, if you have to do, if you need a light source and a power meter, and you're doing these loss test sets, or you're doing loss meeting, loss readings, 
This has everything that you need in one kit. Say, hey, this is, I need a multi-mode or I need single mode, and I don't need a data log, and we, we have one for you. So again, everything, it's like it's a one-stop shop for your optical loss test sets. The next thing that we have, and we're really getting very positive feedback from the telecommunication optical industry here are our other go kits, our higher end go, go kits that we have targeted for contractors, for antenna systems, for data centers, and you know fiber to the home. The, the, the unique concept about this go kit is everything you're going to need to diagnose, repair, and test is all in one location in a backpack that you can put on your back, go to your location, do what you need to do, do what you need to do, pack it back up, and you're on your way. You're not looking for, oh, where's this, where's that, where's this? Everything's in that kit that you need. And we can tailor these kits. We have kits that are already designed that we from feedback from other customers that we have in our system. But these are very configurable. One of the things that you'll see in the larger companies is, you know, what they are calling now is MTTR or mean time to repair. That's one of the things that there's, there was some studies done before and sometimes the, the, the mean time to repair or to diagnose an optical problem can be anywhere between four to eight hours sometimes before any work is even being done because they don't have the proper equipment, they don't have the proper training, they don't have the convenience of having everything in one location. And that's where, you know, the benefits of the Go Kits are coming in is if you purchase a Go Kit, hopefully we're going to also train you on the equipment. And if you're trained better, you're going to know how to use the equipment. You're going to know how to, to, to diagnose your problems. So it's a kind of a trickle-down effect that, you know, you start with, with your technicians or individuals that are educated on how to use equipment, then they have all the equipment available to them in a convenient package, you become more efficient. And before you know it, your mean time to repair, you know, that was between four and eight hours, maybe knocked down to two hours or three hours. And that's the, the main benefit and the main target we're looking for with our Go Kits. And of course, as in with fiber optics, the biggest enemy is dirt. So we have tools and consumables, but mainly consumables for the dirt standpoint, to help keep your fiber optic equipment, as well as your connections, clean and free of debris. And that's what's going to keep where you're going to find 90% or maybe 80% of your problems that are a result of dirt and problems with your end phases. So as you can see here, we have a plethora of toolkits, hand tool kits, quick term you know, cleaning kits, and they're all ready made, designed, ready for purchase in theory, but they have everything that you're going to need for your specific application once we determine what your application is. And again, we can configure other ones if you want. Hey, I don't want that piece, piece of equipment in there, I want a different. We will tailor make these toolkits or go kits for you. Here we go, some more. We got cleaning kits. And they start basic and they go up to, you know, ones that are, you know, packed with a lot of stuff, a lot of cleaning supplies. We got the quick clicks, we have the cassette cleaners, the gel gel removers, microscopes. You know, you can go for basic or you can go for, you know, if you want to, you know, go all the way, you can go you can get all, you know, what you need. Um, and in each case, again, it's going to depend on your application of what you need. The other thing here, I'll go over the training school a little bit more. You know, we have a succession plan, and that's one of the important things and benefits of, you know, training with the fiber school. And this just shows some of the large companies that have taken our training classes and 
have gone through the secession plan. And you can see here we, you know, we have, you know, the optical and star, you know, that's your almost like your introductory class. And you go to your outside plant to get that experience. And you go, the next thing on to that is your master fiber optic technician. So each class builds on the previous class and it also, you know, it makes you more valuable and more well-rounded as far as fiber optic training goes. And this kind of just goes over, you know, one of the labs that you do. A lot of the, we, not only do we do coursework, but we also do hands-on. And I think that's one of the main things that, that allows students to learn what is being taught is they're getting in there and they're actually using the tools. They're stripping, they're testing, they're crimping, they're splicing. They're doing all the things that they're going to have to do out in the field, but in an environment that it's not, I got to get this network up and running because, you know, customers don't have their TV on. It's, it's that type of situation that if you understand how you're using the tools and what you're supposed to do before you go out in the field, then once you get out in the field, you're not, you're not going to lock up. You're not going to second guess yourself. You're already going to have that understanding because either that or you weren't, you were, you know, you're, you're learning on, on the job while you're out there. And that's really not a smart way to do it because you get into bad practices doing it that way. And here's another example of lab. And this is all the stuff that you're going to, you know, you're going to learn if you take this emergency restoration class. We even have learning how to read an OTDR trace. A lot of people go out there, they understand, hey, I hook my launch box up to my OTDR, I hook my OTDR up to a port, I hit a button, I get a trace, I save that. Okay, now I pass it on to somebody else. Or, okay, this looks like the results that we need, and we're going to save those results and go on to the next one. Sometimes you have to know, hey, once I look at this OTR trace, how can I better understand what I'm seeing? It's a graph. It's not a graphical or representation of what's going on. There's, it's, it's a trace. What does this trace mean? What does this peak mean? What does this, what do these, what does everything mean on that screen? Is it loss? Is it a splice? Is it a connector? And this is gonna, we're gonna going through this class. You learn to understand. Okay, this is what I need to to look at. You know, after my technician in the field shoots the trace and then sends it to me, I'm not out in the field, but I can look at this trace and understand, okay, this is what this means, this is where this means, and I need to do this, and okay. So that's what this class is designed for. So this is a, you know, a higher end class. And this will tell you everything that, you know, what you need to know, and this is a brief synopsis of what you do or what's done in this this class. So that basically kind of concludes the webinar here. I'm not sure if anybody has any questions. Again, you can email us, call, and we'll be glad to help anybody out with uh, their fiber optic needs from products, services, training, software. You know, we have it all here for you and we want to we want to educate you and we want to help you out. Currently I don't see any questions from anybody. So as you can see now on our screen that's sales email that you can send questions into. And if you want to talk to me specifically, my name is Joe Chiron. My email address, you can ask for somebody through the sales group and they can get you to me if you need further help and feel like talking about some of your fiber optic applications. But outside of that, I'm going to say if nobody has any more questions, I think that's going to conclude our presentation for today. I thank you for joining 
and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you.